In science, we study phenomena. Now, this is the plural for phenomenon, and this refers to a general result that has been observed reliably in systematic empirical research. And al although an empirical result might be referred to as a phenomenon after being observed only once, this term is more likely to be used for results that have been replicated. And replication, remember, this is a key component of science. It's incredibly important that scientists are able to reproduce the same result that they found initially. In fact, most researchers will replicate their own studies numerous times before they attempt to publish them. So when you do read a research report, generally it starts off with that initial study, which supports the hypothesis, and then one or more follow-up studies that try to replicate that initial finding and expand on it in some interesting ways. <clears throat> and particularly interesting results do tend to come out of this kind of self-replication. Long before the study is ever published, the researcher is able to very, you know, completely explain the phenomenon in many cases. But there are, of course, going to be times when the researcher fails to replicate their own result or another researcher fails to replicate that first individual's uh, finding. And when you fail to replicate, that could be due for a couple of reasons. First of all, obviously, it could be that the original study was a fluke. The original study was erroneous, or it's just overly narrow. In other words, you can't replicate it because it wasn't really there in the first place. The second explanation would be that your replication was just too different. It, it missed some of the important uh, constants that you should keep. Too much variability, too much of a difference there. So to determine which one of these explanations is true, just basically keep doing replications, do more and more replications in order to figure out exactly, you know, how to evaluate that original study. And there have been many really interesting phenomena that have been observed in psychology. I just wanted to mention a few. First of all, there's something called blind sight where people with damage to their visual cortex are sometimes able to respond to visual stimuli that they cannot consciously see. So imagine this, imagine you are completely blind and it's a huge problem for you, obviously, it's a huge disability. But when somebody hands you something and just says, I know you can't see what this is, but just guess, like what do you think this might be? Individuals with blind sight can often correctly guess. Uh, another example would be uh, this individual with blind sight in a particular study was observed. They asked him to just walk down a hallway, and this hallway had multiple obstacles in it, and he was able to navigate the obstacles, even though he claimed he could not see them, and he was, you know, verified as being blind. But that's, that's kind of a rare thing. Something that's a lot more common is a different phenomenon called the bystander effect, or you could call it bystander apathy. This refers to when uh, there are multiple people present in an emergency situation, and the observation that the more people present, the less likely help will be provided. In other words, if there are hundreds of people present when somebody gets hurt, it's likely no one's going to help. But if there's only one person present when that other person gets hurt, it's very likely they will help. And this is due to an explanation that we call the diffusion of responsibility. In other words, the, the, the burden, that psychological burden to help has been spread across everybody present evenly. And as a result, while everybody there cares about the person who got hurt, they just don't feel the burden. Uh, another really interesting psychological phenomenon is something called the fundamental attribution error. This is something everybody does every single day. It doesn't matter how much you know about it. It doesn't matter how much you try to avoid it. 
people are always doing this. That's why we call it the fundamental attribution error. And this refers to the fact that people tend to explain others' behavior in terms of their personal characteristics as opposed to the situation. This can also be referred to as the actor-observer bias or the self-serving bias. And this just means that, you know, as an observer, when you're watching somebody else, you tend to attribute the cause of the behavior to internal factors, to their disposition, to their wants, to their motives, personality. But when we observe ourselves, when we are observing ourselves as the actor, we tend to look outwards at environmental explanations. And this might not seem like such a big deal, but it has a lot of really clear implications. It's like, if you find, if you get in trouble for speeding on the highway, you're not going to say, oh, officer, I'm sorry I was speeding on the highway. I'm an irresponsible driver. Nobody says that, right? You always have a clear excuse. Like, I was speeding on the highway because my boss was forcing me to get to work on time, and I was held back by this and that and the other thing. So you're looking outwards at all these external explanations. But then when you're driving on the freeway and somebody cuts you off going way too fast, you're not going to say, oh, that person's boss must be giving them a lot of pressure and must be, you know, they must have had some traffic issues back. No, nobody says that. You're just going to see that person cut you off going too fast and you'll be like, this guy's a huge jerk, right? Like, that's just how we are. That's how people do it. That's why we call it the fundamental attribution error. Another interesting phenomenon that's in, not really common at all, in fact, you're never going to experience this outside a laboratory, is called the McGurk effect. Now, in nature, the sounds you hear match the things you see. Like, as you're watching my mouth move, you are also hearing the sounds produced by these particular mouth movements. It would be impossible for me to make a mouth movement that does not match the sound it produces. That's why you can't experience this phenomenon outside the laboratory. But if you did use technology to match together a mouth movement and a sound that don't go together, that's how you get the McGurk effect. And when you have that kind of audio visual mismatch, what you tend to perceive is a sound that isn't actually present. So it's hard to explain without you checking it out yourself. So I'm going to put a link to uh, the McGurk effect in the description for this video. It's a really kind of creepy effect. It's one of these things that only works if you're both watching and listening. Then there's another phenomenon that we see all the time, and it actually causes a lot of problems. It's called the own race effect. This refers to how people tend to recognize faces of their own race more accurately rather than people of other races. You know, this is when people say things to you like, all you people look the same to me. If you've ever heard somebody say that, what they're basically saying is, I'm, I, I'm not part of your group. I'm not part of your race. You know, everybody in my group is a beautiful and unique snowflake, but all you people, you're just the same. You know, every single one of you is the same. And yeah, that's racist. But the point of this phenomenon is that it's not just them being a jerk. It's actually true for them. They just don't see the difference. They can't see it. Their perceptual sensory systems, they can't identify these individuals that part, aren't part of their race. So it's like a deeply ingrained psychological, like perceptual kind of racism. And then uh, something I like to talk about a lot is called uh, the placebo effect. This refers to how when you give somebody a fake treatment, whether it's a psychological or medical treatment, when you give them a fake treatment, this will often lead to real improvements in their symptoms and functioning. You know, sometimes patients will so show signs of improvement simply because they believe they're receiving a treatment. And that's actually not so strange. In a lot of studies we've done, Optimism and just believing that others are caring for them and trying to help them, that gives people, to put it simply, warm and fuzzy feelings. And those warm and fuzzy feelings are good for your physical health. So placebos 
can be a great way to help somebody who has a minor issue like a headache or back pain or something like that. But obviously the placebo effect has its limits. There is no such, the placebo effect could never cure any kind of serious ailment like cancer or an infection of any kind. All it can really do is alleviate minor pains. <clears throat> Then there's the mere exposure effect. And this is something that business people are very aware of and take advantage of all the time. This refers to how the more often people are exposed to a stimulus, the more they will like it. Even if they aren't fully aware they're being exposed to the stimulus, you know, if it's being presented subliminally. So the, like I said, business people, po politicians, all kinds of influencers do this all the time. You know, when you, I uh, see a commercial for this same person again. It's like you've seen that commercial hundreds of times. It can be annoying. It can be frustrating, right? But they are getting you to be familiar with these characters. They're getting, they're making you feel almost like you have a relationship with these individuals just because you keep seeing them over and over and over and over. And generally, the more often people see someone, the more, the more they're going to feel affection towards them. And honestly, I could just keep going on and on and on about psych phenomenon. It, that's basically what general psychology is all about. The entirety of that course is just talking about various psych phenomenon and its relevance to the understanding of human behavior. So all I really want to wrap this up by saying is there's a lot of stuff out there to study. The universe is a pretty big place and there's always new things to discover and learn about.